session we will discuss about Splunk licensing. How exactly uh, licensing works in our Splunk uh, environment and uh, what are the significant roles of having Splunk licensing and how it works. All right. Whenever the data which is being sent from different applications to Splunk platform, there is a component called a Splunk indexer which will play a major role to store the data based on our data retention policy. As part of our Splunk indexing process, it does calculate the amount of data which are coming in and same thing should get reported to our Splunk license manager. For example, from one, one of the application, if I'm uh, reading the log of one GB of data, one GB of log, the same amount of data are getting stored under Splunk indexer. Meantime, the, it does calculate the amount of data, which means which is of one GB, the same one GB of one GB uh, volume information should get reported to Splunk license manager. So this is how a Splunk license manager will have a count of amount of data which are getting stored in a Splunk index. Please note, whatever the data which we are getting stored in Splunk environment, this licensing gets calculated based on the incoming raw data, incoming original data. It is not based on something called as a cooked data. Cooked data in a sense, we'll extract something, we'll filter something, right? we'll just delete some data, or will manipulate the data, right? So these actions will not be considered while data are getting ingested. Hence, it is very much important to filter and you know to remove some unwanted noises prior indexing to our system. And uh, in certain cases, the indexing will, I mean, the, the licensing will not come into the picture in case of having uh, the data which are in, in internal index and introspection index. Basically, internal indexes will have an eye on the internal actions which we are going to perform in our uh, Splunk environment, whereas introspection log will help us in troubleshooting some issues. And these are all the main uh, topics or these are the main stages where we'll get in and to look into some internal logs and introspection logs for troubleshooting purpose. And these two, the data which are stored under these two indexes will not be measured for licensing. So this is one of the good features which is offered by Splunk. And whatever the daily indexing volume is measured from midnight to midnight. Right? So uh, if you have uh, 100 GB of data which you have purchased, so I mean the licensing if you have purchased for 100 GB per day, then it starts from tonight to tomorrow's midnight. So license meter gets resetted at every 12 a.m. in the early morning. This is how it does calculate the licensing volume. Coming to a Splunk Enterprise uh, version, uh, we have a different Splunk uh, licensing. Okay, let's look into it. So just come to this, uh, just open your uh, Splunk and come to settings and click on licensing. So, this is the licensing uh, screen you could see here, right? So see here, you will have some local in local server information like what is your uh, license expiration time and what is the daily volume which is available for you and what like how much amount of data which you have already ingested and if, uh, if you have any kind of a warning, those information also can be seen here, right? So some basic information about your uh, uh, licensing part you can see here and if you want to uh, look at the different uh, licenses we have we have uh, certainly we have four different licenses by default whenever we install and configure our plan so we fall under enterprise license and enterprise trial license it which will be valid for 60 days and once we complete our 60 days of time then automatically Splunk will move this trial license to free license. Whereas in uh, enterprise license, we will deal with uh, reporting, creation of a dashboard, uh, reports, and uh, we will create uh, multiple users as well. Right? 
whereas once it moves to free license will we cannot have more than two users and distribution uh, such facility will not be available and we cannot have more than two users right so hence uh, we must uh, very much cautious before actually it is uh, getting ended right so in, in that case if we need we can go ahead and purchase enterprise license how to get enterprise license so it it again it based on the amount of data which we are ingesting in this plan if we are uh, ingesting 100 gb of data per day then we need to uh, communicate the same with plan support the team and we need to explain our uh, data ingestion uh, policies and uh, data limitation policies and how much of amount of data which we are consuming so based on that they will give us a license by after we make the payment okay so based on that based on our communication uh, they will send out an email that with the extension of dot license and once we have that license we need to upload that license on the license master which we are configured in, in this case if i am considering this machine as my license master then i need to and if i have my license i need to click on this option for add license and here it is saying licenses which ends with dot license so just click on this one and you just you know uh, upload that particular license and there are some chances if you have uh, the license in terms of uh, xml format then you just click here and just uh, type that xml and click on install so like likewise you can install your license on your plunk company for now let's say this is uh, this is my uh, license master and i have around 10 different indexer which are participating in indexing process so in my in my organization in my splunk architecture i have 10 different indexes indexers right then all 10 indexers should report to this license master then only it does have an eye on the amount of data which are getting indexed right so how to do that in in this example if i consider a license master has hosted in some cloud server and if i consider this is my indexer then how to register this particular indexer into my license master of course this can be done with the help of uh, some configuration but uh, on web gui app application just click on if, let's say if this is your indexer just come to this option click on change to clear so which means this is a indexer and i want to report this particular indexer to this license master or license manager so here i need to mention the ip address or whatever the url which you have with the help of management board so if this is your license master and this is your uh, indexer so on each indexer you need to perform this particular action so that all the indexer should get report to this license master this is how the licensing works and how to configure and we have something we had something called as powder license uh, we do need this powder license as a, as long as uh, we are using universal powder and this will come in the picture if you are if you have a dedicated heavy powder but we'll we'll look into uh, these details in our upcoming session all right so these are and uh, later we have something called as plant interface security license plant uh, infrastructure license right so these are all of the premium apps so these get added for example if you have if you have purchased 100 gb of uh, 100 gb volume license and going forward if you want to have a uh, plant security for plant security if you purchase for example 30 gb volume then you can ingest 130 gb of data per day please understand plan enterprise license can be availed based on my data ingestion volume similarly if i want to have my plan enterprise security app to be installed and monitored uh, my security related concerns then i need to again purchase plan enterprise security app based on my license 
So if I if I uh, purchase Splunk Enterprise Security app for 30 GB of data, then it it will just combine with already existing 100 GB of data, and we can try to inject 130 GB of data into my Splunk index. We will see how to configure Splunk Enterprise and how to use Splunk Enterprise Security as well in our upcoming sessions. All right. And how can we calculate our licenses? It is always recommended to analyze a incoming logs. And you need to estimate like how much data you may get as part of your application data. Right? So you 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 must very much cautious to have a a visibility on your log sizes. If you are getting, you know, uh, for example, in one of your application, if you are uh, getting uh, 10 GB of data, and of course, uh, in some other application is sending, you know, 20 GB of data per day, right? So similarly, you, you should calculate like how many application servers are there, or, like how, from how many forwarders or from how many applications you need to read the log. And also, you need to estimate the size as well. So based on that, you can decide like how much of a uh, volume or how much of license we need. And based on that, you can it's also mandatory to determine like how many number how many number of indexes we want. Right? We will we will see that and similarly we, we need to determine how many uh, number of search heads, uh, do we really need any any heavy forwarder and do we need any deployment servers and like, how to configure business master and also we need to uh, have a clarity on clustering and high availability options. We will see, you know, uh, what is uh, high availability options and what are uh, clustering in our upcoming sessions. This is my recommendation for small enterprise. If you, if if you are uh, receiving a data which is less than 100 GB per day, then it it is better to have one search sheet and one indexer to manage. A different application data which is of less than 100 GB per day. And we can always scale up this particular requirement. If you want additional, if, if you see more uh, more number of data are getting in there, then either we can increase a number of index. So that comes under a small, or, or I can say this is a medium. I can uh, I can uh, quote for medium enterprises. So which means if the data, the incoming data falls under 10, 100 GB to 250 GB, then my preference is to have two search heads and two more than two or more than one index. Right, so that uh, traffic get distributed across search heads and distribute uh, and two indexes. And for large enterprise. If your data is more than 250 GB per day, then definitely we need to have more than two indexers, preferably three or four, based on your data retention policy and how much of data which are getting in there. And definitely we need to have more than two subjects. And as we have multiple subjects and multiple indexers, it is uh, better to have a deployer to monitor, uh, to push the configurations to subjects. And similarly, we need to have a dedicated machine called cluster manager or cluster master, so so that which will help us to push the configuration to manage all the indexes. And similarly, it is better to have a deployment server if you have more than hundred clients or hundred uh, deployment I mean, application server. Right. So this is this is how uh, we are going to calculate our Splunk licensing part. Right. So this is for today. Uh, we'll discuss about data onboarding techniques and everything in our upcoming. Thanks for watching.